150th, F1.2 ISO 6585 mil, 8K. Unbelievable. The rain is falling. There it is, falling. We've been walking in the rain for about four hours. We were just about to call it a day and then this awesomeness occurred. And this is just the 85 at its peak right here. Showing you depth of field. We're moving the far, moving the focus points. You can see how that changes all the way to the background. This is just unbelievable. What a magical time we had shooting. Joe and I, we only went out for about three or four hours, but it was the absolute perfect conditions for me to be in my absolute happy place with the 85mm 1.2. We took it slow. This lens with the 45 megapixel Z9 combo with the large IBIS unit that comes with that camera. I'm sure we could get the same results with the Z7. Absolutely outstanding. If we have a look over here, we're shooting at ISO 64. The shutter speed is 13. The aperture is 1.2. And we are on version 3.1 of the Z9 firmware. This lens, before it even turned up, I knew, having worked with the original F-mount 85 1.4, I knew what the potential was. And then I knew, based on Z lenses to date, I knew potentially how much better it could be than the old version of the 85. What would we get? What would be improved? It would be sharper. It would be clearer. It would be brighter. It would be sharper in the corners. The suppression of flaring and chromatic aberration would be improved. And it would be improved to a point where maybe it's essentially a non-issue. This video illustrates exactly how I imagined that this lens would and could perform in some of the most difficult photographic situations, yet situations where I absolutely love to shoot. We can see up here we are after midnight. It's late. It is absolutely torrentially raining. And not only am I handheld and I'm shooting and it's raining and it's wet and it's crazy and it's the middle of the night, but check it out. We are shooting at ISO 64. So every image you're going to see is shot at ISO 64. And I think every image is shot at 1.2. And all that changes is the shutter. This is an astonishing piece of equipment that will bring both the hobbyist and the professional so much joy and will allow for ideas that you can dream up to become realities. Let's take a look through some of these images and what I've done to bring them to life. Just to kick things off, a little bit of depth of field, a little bit of texture, and we can see here just how well this foreground is rendered and just the beautiful bokeh. And if we go into 100%, we can see here in the center of the image, we have lovely round bokeh balls. Now, almost nothing is done to this image if we look over on the left. A little bit of shadow has been brought up, a little bit of saturation. Doesn't have to be, doesn't need to be. There is already a lot of color there without that. Now, what I love about shooting in the rain is we get color everywhere. So if it wasn't raining, the color would just be up here at the top, but because it's raining and raining a lot, we have color everywhere. So it just expands the photographer's palette for color. People ask, why do I shoot at night all the time? That's because you can't do this during the day. It doesn't really happen. Unless this practical light is brighter than the sun, you can't really see them. You certainly can't see them reflecting off the ground. So you have to do this at night time. What we're doing here is changing the critical focus point foreground, middle ground, to all the way out to the background, and how it really changes the image and how you feel about the image. When you're a street photographer, you've got to wait for the street to do things that fit your story, that fit what you want to say. But just look at this glorious, soft, creamy bokeh goes through here from the bottom all the way through to here where our focus is around this area here. Coda is nicely in focus. 
and we can come up to 100% and just see how well, under extraordinarily harsh conditions, how all of this is being rendered. I mean, just to me, and I love this, and maybe nobody else cares. I love the way the cobblestones here are rendered. I feel like I can touch them. I feel like I can actually feel them. I really understand what that texture is. And I love when a photograph can evoke that for me. I can feel it. It's quite visceral. I really believe that I'm here in this space and, and reacting to it. Just, just gorgeous stuff. This is really harsh for lenses. So we're in the corner of the lens where that bright B2W is. There's absolutely minimal flaring out into the black areas. The background just looks delicious. And the lens is just controlling all of these elements. We're at ISO 64, one tenth of a second, handheld, 85 mil. Now this image is fine in black and white or color, but I just thought I'd try something different. I love, I love, this is a very classic, timeless image. We could be anywhere from the last 50 or 60 years. There's almost nothing to give that away. And I love that about this image. And you can see some slight different adjustments I'm doing here. Even so, the settings are identical and these images were taken very closely to each other. You can see here how you change the settings, how it affects how you feel about the image. And I'm gonna make a video about how color to black and white different color temperatures and just different treatments of your images really change the way you feel. Which do you like better? Let me know. Do you like this one where it's darker and more contrasty? Or do you like this one where it's more shades of gray through the whole image? I'm not sure which way I lean. I think I lean more towards this one than this one. Love you to let me know in the comments below. Love, love, love this image. And, and just to show you, pop in here and we can see that the focus is on the gentleman and we're at 100%. We can see hair, we can see his pocket, we can see his trousers. If we bring that up, we're at 64 ISO, so we've got so much. We can actually see that he is a waiter and he's got some sort of napkin here and that may well be a waiter's friend in his pocket. I don't know if anyone knows what that is, but that's something to open bottles. I just love the latitude that you can find in these files, in these cameras, unbelievable. And when you're shooting a base ISO like this, you can kind of do whatever you want. Love this image. This is calendar worthy. This night was so successful. I could almost create 12 images for a calendar just out of this four hour period. It's that good. This is good. I love the colors. I love the, the red, white, and blue that comes through here. Again, we've just got the textures. You really feel like you can be there. We're shooting it base ISO. Look how little I've done to this file. Just have a look. Just shadows. We can bring this up because we've got so much latitude. Completely change this image with just one minor adjustment. And I can't tell you how powerful it is to be able to shoot at night, handheld, at base ISO, like you're shooting in sunshine and you've just got these files that you can do whatever you want with. All the information's there. There is no grain. There is nothing happening. But wait, it gets better. A car turns up. Let's get to the last one in the series. Yes, the one that I made red here. I think I decided this was my favorite. I just think this almost looks like a painting. It looks like cinema noir. It's just, I mean, I couldn't be happier. That is an extraordinary image to me. And how might you change it? Well, I've done a little bit of adjusting. As you can see here on the left, it's pretty minor. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. If you want to, you could maybe put a bit of a vignette on it. But you know what? I think it looks good without it. Let's keep going. Now, because I was walking, I'd never really noticed this cafe before with its interesting arch. Look at this arch. Never really noticed it. And I just found it really interesting, really intriguing. Love the textures, love the colors. And again, just look at how ridiculously sharp this lens is. It is sharp. Look at these characters along here. We are at 100% from one side of the frame to the other. Sharp, sharp. Classic photo, everybody's taken this photo, but again, handheld 1 20th of a second, f1.2, 85 mil. You can just do it, no dramas. I wanted to show you this file because this this is, I've, I've worked on it, but 
I want to show you how powerful the Z9 dynamic range is and this is before I've made adjustments. Now you might say, why is it so underexposed? And the reason it's underexposed is to protect the highlights. As you can see here, these flying fish and this sign, we can see them. If we exposed for the background, they'd be blown out. But by doing this exposure, then bringing the highlight back down, bringing up the shadow, we get to have everything. And that is the power of the Z9. The Z6 is the same, Z7, all these cameras are the same. You can do this and there is no penalty. This is all just still looking absolutely superb. We are at 100%. We've gone into the darkness. We've maintained our highlights. It's just phenomenal. I mean, look at that. That is very powerful. These are robotic uh, dumpsters and this is to stop people from dumping rubbish you actually have to go up to these dumpsters here you've got like a key card a door opens there's a light in there and people throw their rubbish in there and this is now all over the city to stop just rubbish being just left everywhere as you can see this is pretty clean laneway in the past it would have been very dirty and we could bring up the blacks a bit and then you just have more of a sense of place now this is all as i said within a three to four hour period the rain came and went, but it mostly rained. I love these images. To me, they're like pieces of art. They're not really photographs. They're about textures and color. But this is just a building site. And personally, I find it gorgeous. Let me know. Tell me in the comments, do you like the razor wire picture? No dramas if you don't. It's not for everybody. But it's not about the razor wire. It's just about the whole thing. I was experimenting here with making this black and white. Not sure which I prefer. Let me know, lady with umbrella, let me know black and white or color. Look at the rendition here. Now, some people might go, ah, that's too sharp. So, okay, it's too sharp. No worries. Let's put in some film grain and suddenly it changes it. It's better to start from a place of sharpness and then you can take it here if you want to. And really, this is what, what we're looking at here now is something similar to what I would have gotten out of my D3 15 years ago. D3 with a 1.4 lens and that's how much technology has changed probably not quite this grainy might be more in there it's hard to say but it's changing it's changing sorry yeah no that's probably not quite enough but we get the idea now this here is a image i've been trying to capture my entire career this hat shop it could be 1950 it could be 1920 it could be 1980 it could be 2023 and I've always struggled because there's so many elements around this shop to get the image, to make it timeless, finally. Finally, I got an image that I am happy with. Now, which do you prefer, the foreground in focus or the hats in the window in focus? Which image? The power of this lens and camera combination to see in the rain, holding 1 13th of a second, just looks awesome. And we can see here flaring chromatic aberration it's all suppressed again a, an extraordinarily tough situation for a digital camera to make this look good and look this good here it is these are raindrops by the way that's what a raindrop looks like over 1 25th of a second in this particular image and again let's just take a look not a lot done i love reflections i love textures i love perspective i love color all of this comes together with these combinations and it was just such a superb night again color shape texture contrast it's all here depth of field color depth perspective texture it's all here shiny <laughs> i'm like a cat with a shiny object it's just so good and you can just see again looking at the left we've got very minor adjustments this is out of camera how good this stuff looks if you get your exposures right and you can mess around as much as you want or not it just doesn't matter just get your exposure right to begin with 
I love this image again for the texture, for the depth of field, for the sense of story and drama and cinema. Oh, it's just so good. I have basically been trying to create these images my entire career and now I have these tools that are delivering it to me in an uncompromising fashion. I do not have to compromise anything. I'm getting exactly what I want and I'm getting it at base ISO in the dark. This was another image I found interesting. Do I get the scooter in focus or do I get the wall in focus? I shot both. You're only going to see this version because this is the version that I think looks better. I love this shot. Again, my style of photography is not for everybody, but I love it. And the reason being is it tells a story with simplicity and it tells a story with depth of field. I don't need the scooter to be in focus to know that it's a scooter. I can tell by the shape. I love that about us humans. We just can see things. And now we get to this unbelievable scene where the rain started to fall really heavily. It was just getting heavier and heavier. And all of this color and all of what's going on here this this is here this is real look over here and look at the saturation i haven't touched the saturation this is what it's looking like now we can we can make it a bit brighter if we want to make it a bit brighter get more contrast in there or not but this is unbelievable this feels like a movie set it's been lit there's lots of color everywhere we've even got the rain machine on we've blocked the street so we can only have our superhero running up this laneway to do something spectacular that's all we need to add to it. There is a story here. Anything could be happening here. Doesn't matter whether it's Iron Man or James Bond or Wonder Woman, whatever's going on next, I feel the drama. And continuing to walk up the laneway, just, just, I, I, I just love this composition. It's got everything I want. It's got perspective, it's got depth of field, it's got texture, it's got color, it's got rain. It's just all here. Unbelievable. ISO 64, 1 13th of a second, F1.2, 85 mil. And I love this image because it brings a whole other vibe, a whole other layer to this laneway that it actually is real. It is working. This guy's popped out the back of a restaurant and he's just thrown some garbage in that trash can there. <laughs> Again, this is not for everyone. This is just a very simple still life about color and shape and texture. And I really dig it. Here is just eight images that I've chosen from the evening. I couldn't be happier with this investment. Is it possible for other lenses to do this? Well, most of it, yes, but some of it, no. Collecting that much light gives you latitude. It allows you to shoot at ISO 64. The suppression, which we've seen in my other video, which you should check out up here, but the suppression of chromatic aberration and flare is unparalleled from this lens. Now, there might be other 85s from other manufacturers. I don't know whether the Canon one is this good. At this point in time, Sony do not have an 85 1.2. There are rumors that one might be coming. Let's see if and when that arrives. So if you think about the three major manufacturers, Canon, Sony, and Nikon, Fuji doesn't fit in this space because they do not make 35 mil lenses or cameras. So they don't compare. Panasonic don't have anything which compares. Perhaps Canon and Nikon are the only two that can compare in this space. And again, I don't really know enough about the Canon lens and the Canon R5, which would be the closest comparison. It's a 45 megapixel camera. They have an 85 1.2. I don't know if the IBIS unit is as good as this one because this IBIS unit in the Z9 with the 85 is uncanny. I will be showing you that in future videos. So right now today, I don't think there are a lot of options for you to get right out here at this particular bleeding edge and have this level of image fidelity being able to be created as you just simply walk around and all I had was the Z9 and the 85mm, that's it. No tripod, nothing else. And I believe you could do this with the Z7. As we've talked about, we think there are more cameras, more XP7 cameras coming soon. 
there are going to be more options. I'm confident sometime soon. We're here. We're now at the time. Anytime soon. Hopefully, we will hear more about other options beyond the Z9. And I ask this question not because I'm wanting to say Nikon is better, but is Canon's dynamic range as good? Is their color science as good? Is their low ISO as good? Is their IBIS as good? Is their flare suppression, chromatic aberration suppression as good? If you are at all interested in this type of photography, this is a lens that you really have to look at. And even the 85 1.8 gets you 85% of the way there. No pun intended. All right, everybody. Well, it's been so good to see you. And I'd love to hear all of your thoughts about these images and how you might use a lens like this in the comments below. Is the 85 1.2 for you? Do you have yours already? Tell me your stories. Or are you seriously thinking about getting one? And if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again. So please do subscribe. Please share this video and please like. It really helps the channel. All right. Bye for now.